Hello, my name is Justin Arnott. I'm the Science and Operations Officer here at the National Weather Service Office in Gaylord, Michigan. I'm going to do a demonstration today of the uh, ESTF Data Load and Blend tool. Um, that basically, the premise behind this tool is that it uh, kind of aligns your current grids with what's happening in observations, and then it blends back to your previously uh, gridded forecast. So it basically helps keep things up to date and fresh. And it can make use of the GFS LAMP data, which we'll see in a minute. Um, so I'll go under the populate menu here to ESTF data load and blend. Um, since it runs on a bunch of different uh, parameters here, it is a procedure, not a smart tool. Um, and if you load it up, basically it has a series of elements, and we'll go through these basically one by one. The first one here on the left is the initialization database. It's going to populate your zero hour grid with something. And in this case, we've selected the OBS database. If you're keeping up with OBS grid QC, then uh, this is a great choice. Um, other choices, RTMA, LAPS, etc., are there. You can then choose what you would like to initialize with. Temperature, dew point, wind, um, which, which grids do you actually want to, uh, to, to influence. You may or may not choose wind gusts. You may very well uh, derive wind gusts from uh, um, your wind grids, but um, that's an option as well. You then have the option to initialize your sky grids. You can either skip that if you say nothing, or initialize them with one of these values. So basically, that's, these things are taking care of populating your zero-hour grid. Then you get to choose whether you want to make GFS LAMP part of this uh, process. If you do, basically what will happen is you will populate the zero hour with your OBS, then you will interpolate an hour into GFS LAMP data. You are actually able to choose, if, um, if you actually use LAMP data, you can actually choose how many hours that of, of, of LAMP data you would like to use, so in this case three, and then it will take uh, delete out two more hours and interpolate back to um, your previous forecast grids. So in this case, basically six hours of your forecast will be updated, your zero hour um, for your OBS data. Um, one hour will be interpolated to three hours of LAMP data with two hours uh, interpolated after that back to your previous forecast. So basically this is saying that you, you in this case you trust the LAMP data to be a, a good indication of what's going to happen in the near term, which it usually is, um, and uh, you can make that part of your uh, update. Now, if you don't think the LAMP is a good option in this case, you can skip using any of these elements and just decide to go forward by uh, um, populating in the, by the OBS database or whatever you choose as your initialization and then interpolating this many hours forward back to your previous grid. So it doesn't use any model data whatsoever. It uses the zero hour and then interpolates back to your previous grid. So basically in this case if you selected two it would delete three hours of grids, it would populate the first hour with your OBS, the, the current hour, um, and then it would interpolate between that and, you, and your hour three grid um, of what you previously had. Obviously there's some caveats in there, things you got to watch out for. Um, if you are already past your high temperature for the day, you know, in the, in the grids and um, you run this without using LAMP data, you may very well interpolate back to a poor forecast if the forecast down the road has not been updated as well, you know, for the second half of the day, for example. So for our example, let's take a look. We'll select the OBS database. Let's make this simple for this period. We'll initialize the, the temperature, and let's skip the LAMP for this, this um, one, and um, <clears throat> keep the default setting of 2. So if we do this, what will happen is basically this is the hour we're right here right now at 14 Z when I'm doing this uh, this training here um, and all it did was populate this hour with the OBS grid and actually goes back into the past and, and populates those as well and then reinterpolates back to your previous forecast so I can go back and see how I blend back into the previous forecast um, a couple other things are also done it recomputes your maximum and minimum temperatures to make sure they are consistent with your new hourly temperature it does the same with T D. So it checks to make sure.